name is Jose Luis uh, Casillas, and uh, my uh, <laughs> co-presenter here is uh, Ed uh, Mosashemi. We both work for GE Hitachi uh, here by uh, Kirtner, Kirtner and Little Orchard. We used to have that big uh, uh, lot where the uh, where the shopping mall is now, across from the from the Oak Hill Cemetery. But we we got a lot of money for that, and they put us in a, in a rented space. But we still uh, we both have been working over 30 years for uh, for GE. And, uh, here in San Jose, our headquarters moved to North Carolina several years ago, but uh, still uh, a couple hundred engineers are, are still working there. And uh, we've been involved with MESA and with different competitions for for a long, long time, I think back in the late 70s or early 80s, something like that. And uh, the last few years, we've been uh, judging the uh, mouse uh, car, mouse trap car competition. And, and so we prepared this um, this uh, outline uh, of uh, different things that the students can learn about uh, about physics and uh, when they're working with a mouse trap, what are the important factors. And, and I'll, I'm going to let Ed uh, Talk about some of these, the, some of the, some of these different concepts. But um, what we added, and here also in the uh, in the second uh, in the second uh, uh, page, is uh, some of the some of the, uh, the types of competitions that that, that we had last this month, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so. Uh, um, we had last year, I haven't seen any of the new rules that they've changed it around, but they, they had uh, distance, and I think this was for the middle middle uh, class, sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. And then we had the accuracy for the um, uh, ninth and tenth grade, and then we had the power competition for the uh, senior, like the, uh, the 11th and 12th grade competition. And depending on what the competition is, it's, it is a different emphasis on the type of uh, mouse car uh, uh, that they uh, mouse trap car that they need to build, and, uh, and especially for power is is a totally different beast than the first two. And then uh, we also um, look here some of the important things. Uh, you know, there's a lot of the rules also that, that uh, you'll see if you haven't gotten it from the web page. But these are the, the, in us looking at what the type of mistakes and, and what some of the things that the different students' uh, uh, models give. These are the, the key things to, to watch out for in the case of the mousetrap. Uh, once in a while, some students will bring a different mouse trap than everybody else, and, and, that, uh, and that's not allowed. Also, there's not enough to be painted in any way, and also the the, the uh, spring is very important. That it needs it uh, should not be altered, modified, bent in, in any way. So that's, those are very, very important things. The tripping mechanism that also is very, very important and very critical for the competition that is able, the car is able to stand still and, uh, and be able to be tripped and moved on. And uh, it has to be very, uh, very sturdy, you know, so that it can leash the, essentially the spring force and not destroy the car or destroy part of the car or make it jump or make it turn or anything like that. So um, things like rubber bands or flexing arms or adding springs and so on. Some, once in a while we have a, a student that's uh, creative. It's become very creative and it's, it's uh, good. But uh, it's good thinking and so on, but it's, it's at a disadvantage to the rest of the, the competition. 
competitors. The, I think uh, something that you see also very often is that the axles and the wheels are, are very important. It's the key for the performance of the cars. If, if they're wobbly, if they're sideways, if they start rubbing, it, uh, it, it's uh, very difficult to, to get a good score or, or even a good performance. Um, it's also good to, to know they, they're able to do trials before the competition, you know, when it travels around and so on, the car sometimes gets out of out of uh, alignment and so on, but they are able to they'll have a chance to trial, and, and even after they do their first trial, well, yeah, even after they do their first trial, they'll have a second trial, and they can fine-tune uh, the car uh, or something to perform. But it's important that they that they test they, before before they show up for the competition that they've done enough testing and they understand how the arm and the release performance is in, the, in what, uh, what uh, how to do it. So this is some of the, the uh, things that we've learned from years of, of uh, observing uh, students and, and their, their models. So we have some pictures of that that we can cover, but uh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, uh, 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 okay. first of all, uh, yeah, uh, my background, I'm a mechanical engineer, um, engineering manager at GE Nuclear. Um, I have to say a couple of words about nuclear. It's very safe. Twenty percent of your electric power right now comes from nuclear of electricity. That means one out of every five homes, as you're going down the street, comes the electricity comes from nuclear. So uh, you can ask me any questions after this session about Fukushima event. I can answer. <laughs> so. Uh, Anyways, and by the way, the survived the earthquake, but what destroyed it is the water, which is like about 40, 50 feet of water. Just imagine you're submerged in the sea. So that's what happened. Yeah. So there's Anyways. a connection between nuclear power plants and a mousetrap? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of passive things. That you can, actually, nuclear is better because you don't need all these active things like mouse spring. <laughs> Anyways. But this, this uh, handout that uh, everybody's got, it's got really the, uh, uh, some concepts, you know, that, that touches on basics of physics, you know. Uh, elements that uh, really the students should be aware of that influences the objective of a car that you're designing. Whether you're designing for a car that should go a distance or a car that should go on an inclined surface. And it all, uh, you know, really relates to all these variables, you know. Uh, one of the forces is the energy. And you need energy to move the, the, the vehicle. And energy is, uh, in terms of uh, what we call in engineering, potential energy. Uh, poten potential energy example is if I have a weight like this, you know, this has a potential energy, has a mass, and it has a height. If I drop it, you know, at the point of impact, you can translate that to a uh, energy. Uh, that's potential energy. Like the water coming off the dam, you know, and it generates electricity at the other end because it turns the wheel or the generator. That's the pot potential energy. Uh, so, you know, like if in this mousetrap, the car, that the energy that's stored in the in this this the one spring, you know, before it unleashes the energy, that's a potential energy. So. Uh, and then that potential energy converts to what is called the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is what moves the car. So these, these are important concepts. The whole idea is to really, what can you do with these uh, concepts that can vary the results and give you different objectives on your car design, the mousetrap. Um, and uh, so, you know, the whole thing is also, you know, the objective of the student should be to, you know, to conserve the energy, to reduce the friction, so you can maximize the energy output that you put into the wheels. Um, the, the power is how quickly the energy is stored in the mousetrap is, and the mousetrap is released. Uh, they, uh, <coughs> so you, 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 yeah, go ahead. Okay, so it says no uh, rubber bands under the trip mechanism. So what is the standard item that you're supposed to use between your throw arm and your wheel? 
Typically, the, uh, this, uh, you have a string attached. The reason is because if you use a uh, rubber arm, then you know rubber, you actually are enhancing that feature by the potential energy that is stored in that you know elastic material, and you are enhancing that you know. Uh, so it's uh, it, so it, it, is, it is an advantage. Or no, it? no, no. It's uh, it only it only state that nothing that flexes like plastic or rubber bands or so on. And so this is this are two samples of that. You know, there's uh, this is basically the the, the, the uh, trap, the arm that's attached to the to the trap with the spring, locking the spring, and then the uh, the uh, string will be rolled in some fashion on the on the axle, whether it be you know, uh, this one is here, this one is there. And so that's uh, that's pretty much it. All that, that can you be have to be a straight stick, a straight uh, piece of wire. Yeah. yeah, you can have a very stiff, a very stiff uh, metal stick could be, or uh, or uh, very uh, or wood, very stiff wood. So the, uh, uh, the other uh, cons, you know, uh, 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 element is the power. How you, how fast or how slow you release that power, and that all depends on you know if you have an inclined surface, you want the energy to be released very quickly mm -hmm. and like an impulsive actually, and then uh, the, uh, the the this. The, the distance, if you are talking about a flat surface, you want that energy to be released slowly. You know? So again, when you are talking about the car design, you know that would definitely make a difference. So, you know, the, the two variables in there is the the moment arm or the length of the uh, lever arm. That if you make it very long, you know that's going to release the energy slowly. So if you make it short. That really release the potential energy that I was talking about is going to release very, very fast. And in an inclined surface, that's what's going to take. So, and also, the other element, of course, is the uh, um, is the uh, 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 you know when you when you're going an inclined surface, you know, for instance, you want you put your car in the first gear. Okay, just imagine now we don't have gears in this in this mousetrap. But you can make that variable change by the diameter of the wheels. So you want those to be, you know, in one of the pictures, you will see if an inclined surface, you don't want to have a huge, you know, wheels. And uh, that that's going to create, you know, that it, it creates what's called a moment arm and the force versus what is energy that is turns and allows that to turn. It's going to give you a, a, a slower release, release of energy. So by Make it the wheels, the front and the back, is smaller. Then you have a very uh, like the first gear. You know, you 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 actually are releasing that energy instead of dissipating that into the wheel. You know, in terms of friction and uh, moment arm. It's like big wheel versus the little. Wheel. So so those are the elements that influence your energy release. Right. So that design, for instance, right here, I would rely this one here to give you a better output on an inclined surface. If you look at the wheel diameter, as opposed to this one here, this is what I call a slow release of energy, and it goes a long way. And with the moment, this this uh, lever arm being long, of course, like I said, it allows the potential en potential energy to be released slowly, you know, rather than very quick. The other element is the inertia and uh, rotational energy, which goes into the uh, rotation of the uh, wheels. Uh, so, uh, and, the, and the torque, of course, the torque is all translates that you get more pulling force with a short, you know, uh, than a long arm. So, uh, and, you know, uh, so these, these, these elements are, I think what I, the, the intent, the you know, objective should be to look at these concepts, these, these concepts that can affect your objectives as whether the car is going to design for uh, for a distance or going on an incline surface. What about that? Does uh, friction here? What about the uh, friction of the wheels? What's, uh, yeah, the uh, the friction of the wheel where the wheel is attached to the uh, in a car like a chassis. You know, you want to use uh, you know uh, minimize the friction like graphite. 
the, the, the contact surface that you have in the uh, wheel. Dry graphite. Yeah, graphite you can use. And graphite you can, you know, it's it's pretty cheap material. You can use graphite, for instance. I've seen in some of the competitions that uh, some students, uh, Jose, correct me if I'm wrong, they used uh, some small bearings, you know. And you have to be careful because the, you know, there is a yeah, there is a trade-off. You know, if you, you make it too heavy, then you know that that will suffer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my suggestion is don't go to that extent to use the uh, you know the bearing. And uh, so you can use some you know graphite or some plastic material or something like that is light and minimize the friction. Yeah, but, uh, definitely graphite in and, uh, and firm firm uh, wheels that point uh, straight and are not wobbly. It's a big and, uh, and so we actually have a, a video of uh, last year's competition of uh, two two good uh, cars, or actually the two winners. Oh no, one is a winner, but the other one was a very high scoring one on the distance. And uh, I can do that. This was actually prepared for our for our own company. Yes, some of the uh, uh, things that. Yeah, the, the traction is also important because you don't want that energy to be spent in spinning the wheel. So you want that energy. Why are we all moving in the incline? Well, um, mm -hmm. I, I think the traction is very important on the incline surface. Oh, yeah. You know? And again, um, uh, I've seen that uh, some students use the, uh, the discs, you know, but using a disc without putting some kind of a uh, abrasive surface on the disc it may not help you because this starts spinning, especially if they use a short arm. You know, that energy, energy is going to be released immediately and, you know, yeah. it'll just make the, the just, car yeah. jump. So that's, that, that's important. So this is where uh, uh, two cars they did very well on the distance. And they were very large, as you can see, they had very large uh, wheels. And, uh, and I think the, the fact that they were so long helped them to, uh, to go straight. If you have the wheels closer together, then uh, any, any, uh, any little uh, deviation you know, from making it is going to go sideways. It gives it better stability, too. It gives it better stability. They're very, very light uh, cars. And, and also, they put in some uh, rubber on the wheels so that they would they would uh, stick because uh, the the surface of the competition is actually it's a linoleum type of uh, uh, surface so it's it can be slippery if you give it too much too much power so these are a couple of the cars there this is uh, sort of like when they bring them in and they're checked in you can see there's all kinds of very, a lot of ideas very very creative. Um, and, uh, and um, this is the place, this is some of the, there's always two or three people to a team. Uh, so they, uh, they all help each other in, in, uh, in, uh, in putting it together. Okay, here is this, this is the, uh, this is the incline, this is the senior. Uh, won. She uh, she almost won the first year. This was her se senior year. And she won here. You can see that. See, went about went about two feet, and uh, anything over a foot is is great. And so this was just uh, outstanding. Here, I'll, I'll play it again. Here, let's see. This is it. So this was big also. But then you see it, it just went up, and as high as it goes, that's where the rear wheels go, that's how you measure it. So this was uh, uh, a tremendous, uh, it, was not, it was light, but it had the, the right wheel and the right, uh, uh, that. and I think it, it releases, you know, the strength sort of released, it, it only gave it two or three, two or three uh, um, winds, and that was pretty much it. Now here's a, uh, this is the, the track for the, uh, 
for the distance where you go and you line up yourself out there, and then you have to go over this, I think it's five feet wide, and you can go for for a hundred feet. And so you set it right on the on the on the line, and, and you can actually put it on either side or bent or direct it as you wish. This was the uh, one of the I think this was the winner, the winner car. Right. But uh, here's a, the type of uh, repair. There's glue, there's uh, hot glue, and some of that to help them out. And it seems like that piece of other. Uh, Can you focus on that the inclined surface for a second? Um, I wanted to point out uh, if you notice in here, you can see that the wheel, in this particular case, you can see some abrasive material, and also the wheel width is. is is, is considerable compared to others. So it can give you more traction in regards to what you were discussing. So it's very important. You, know, so you don't want that energy to be dissipated into spinning. You want it to be in transport, transferring from potential energy to kinetic energy, which is moving the car forward. And now this is a plain uh, plywood. So it's painted and so on, but it's not, not slick, if you will. And, uh, so it, it has better friction it grabs better than the than the plain floor but it still it still uh, uh, it still needs to to, uh, to be uh, to be able to grab on that Here's the, here's the other one. See, it takes off, and it kind of goes slow, and it's still, it's still uh, unwinding. But it just keeps going. Keeps mm -hmm. going. It's going to almost 40 feet. Now, the students are not supposed to be walking there. But this <laughs> boy just thought he was excited about well, this just car right along. <laughs> Second place or third place. would have made it all the way to the in the hallway. It was but, uh, yeah, there was there's uh, there were two cars that went about uh, into the 90 to 100 feet last year, and this one I think was the third place, which was about 40, 40 feet. And any any average year, this one would have walked by 40 feet, but somehow there were two that, that those two that went uh, nearly 100 feet. Right? So, so that was uh, that was pretty much. This attachment here, and also the attachment on, of the uh, of the string to the wheels, and uh, and sometimes uh, sometimes it will catch on to the wheel, and then it'll unwind, and then it'll rewind, and it stops it at maybe 10 feet or something like that. And so, ideally, you want it to uh, to release once it's given all the energy that it can. Notice that if they use some spring material, which is very, you know, um, uh, not abrasive, it's very slick, they start spinning. So uh, also they have uh, where the axle is attached to it. I notice that some students they have used some some maybe, uh, I think it was like a sandpaper material or something like that, so they can 
can actually utilize all the you know unwinding energy or kinetic energy as it was releasing the spring into turning the axial. So it's, it's very important to uh, you know take a note of that also. Did, did you uh, go over some of the uh, the uh, items that if they do not follow may disqualify? Yeah, it's, you know, it's the most thing. important, of course, is the spring. You know, the spring cannot be uh, increased in diameter size. The spring coil itself, you know, the spring wire material uh, cannot be heat treated. Uh, one way to heat treat is the heat, when you heat treat material metals, and it, you can see the discoloration. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, that that is a big one. Um, yeah. Even also another uh, smaller uh, details like the tripping mechanism, you know, the mouse trap is it, it has its this tripping uh, mechanism, and sometimes they will want to put a, something around it or a different way of a, of, of uh, catching it to release it, and that's not they're not supposed to do anything with that. Just basically the standard way of that the mouse trap uh, sits. And uh, that's in, uh, in uh, where you would put the cheese. That's where where you want to trip it. <laughs> on the little kit. So so um, uh, sometimes they've even taken apart the the, uh, the parts, the metal parts from the wood. You can't. That would that's not allowed. Just leave it. The, not even, even painting it. For some reason, they don't allow it to paint. Maybe because it, it, it wouldn't show that it's a standard uh, mousetrap or not. But no no painting or decoration. And so, and, uh, and, uh, so that's, those are the, the big things. The, the tripping is, is something, the trippings and, and the tripping arm is something that, uh, that is uh, usually very difficult and, and, it, uh, and it breaks for some reason. Also, the stability of the wheel is very important. And some, you know, sometimes we've seen students that they spend a lot of, you know, time in the machine on the car, but the wheels, you know, it's just like it was put together the last thing. You know, they did not spend enough time to really think it through as far as the friction, stability, and it's wobbly. And you know, you immediately can see that all the energy is going into the wheels and not moving. So that's critical to to take uh, note of. Yeah, yeah. For them to to test the model for different arm lengths, different attachments, and how the how well it releases the strain, and the, the stripping, and to be ready to fix or you know, to understand really how the wheels and the uh, and this, how it grabs the arm, all of that, all those parts that they uh, they get a good understanding of how it works. Again, the, the distance for the for the younger uh, students, uh, yeah, the idea is to, is, is like you saw in the video, to kind of start slow and just kind of pick up speed and go as straight as possible. And, and once, uh, once the spring has discharged, to continue to just roll, 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 roll. And some of these things, they, they just roll forever. The accuracy, I think, is, is uh, I think it's like 15 feet or five meters, you know, uh, something like that. I, I think we put a, a, a bullseye five meters away from the start, and the idea is to be as close as possible. And we had uh, we had about uh, five or six entries, and uh, and two of them were very close, were within within one meter. I think were were two of them. So so this uh, is not so much. I want to go forever, but I, do, I want it to go only so much, and and so so uh, you know how much strain you use. Probably the most important thing that you test it over and over and over to see what kind of variation you have. So this is this uh, is more of a uh, thinking one, and of course the hardest one is this this power because it involves the the weight of the car, the size of the wheels, and uh, so that, that they don't slip, that they grab and it goes up and you get as much of the energy released fast, but not too fast, 
but not too late. Sometimes they trip it and the car doesn't move. It just, it just sits there. It just and, and, and the spring is, stays where, where it is. I mean, it, it, it doesn't have enough strength to even move the car because, because of that. And some other times it releases and the wheels just spin, you know, or it just jumps off. So it's in between, and so that's, that's why it's the most challenging one. So the key is to really make the students aware that if you design a car for distance, it will not work for incline surface. You have to have a clear objective based on uh, concepts like power, you know, slow release or long-term release of energy. Uh, the other concept, of course, is the uh, weight friction and so forth. So you have to really keep these in mind and promote in the independent thinking. That's the whole idea. Is you know, when I first got into engineering, somebody told me that a test is better than a thousand expert opinions. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was right on his door. I believe that. You know, show me. You know. So you just put 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 the data together and you can change the variables and it can validate your assumptions. So that's how, that's really the whole purpose of this. You know, touching on these elements that influence the, the results. Yeah, yeah for, the, for the encouraging the students to, uh, to uh, uh, pursue the, you know, science or math or so on, and for them just to realize that a lot of the things that they do that they, today is uh, they're naturally using all the, all the understanding of how physics works, you know, like, oh, geez, you know, we got to go to San Francisco, you know, and it's, and it's 60 miles from here, well, can we make it in an hour? Oh, but most, they feel, no, of course, you know, because we drive 60 miles an hour or 70 miles an hour, we can get there, and it's all that, all that plain physics that they know, they know how, how things are supposed to work, yeah. and, uh, and as they, as they carry things, as they do things, it's, it's all very natural. But uh, you think if often they have the, the concept that, oh, no, 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 it's all just this funny looking math and expressions and so on. And it's not, you know, that's, that's after, like you said, first you, you see it, and then you say, well, why did it do it that way, you know? And, and that's how you understand it. And, and by doing some of these trials, that's the, and uh, we get them to think about that. When we do the competition, we, we try and explain to them some of these principles that they've been applying as when they did them, when they do, when they built the scars and so on. So hopefully it encourages them. Right? Okay.